Shalom, everybody. Shalom. Welcome to The Way Remnant. I'm Jeff Brandon, and I am uh, flying a little solo tonight. Miranda's not feeling just the best. Uh, so we're going to be doing some prayer for her and some other folks tonight. Um, but uh, welcome to The Way Remnant. We're excited that you're here. Welcome to our, our home Bible study. Uh, I will tell you this already. Kinsley, if you guys know who Kinsley is, she is a little wound up tonight. And so you may hear some barking. Uh, you may hear a little bit of uh, growling or a scamp little tiny feet scampering around. So just welcome to our home Bible study. Uh, we're excited to have you here tonight. So uh, it, it's been a little bit. I uh, I was uh, I had a, a really bad toothache for a couple weeks. Uh, still am in uh, on schedule to get a root canal at the end of this month. Uh, but they were able to, with some antibiotics, get the tooth under control. So I'm able to eat, drink, and uh, actually talk without a big, massive headache going on. And then right after that, I uh, had a little bit of food poisoning and then got sick. So it was not COVID. But uh, anyway, we're <laughs> we're back. We're back. And uh, and then now tonight, Miranda filled in for us last for me last week, uh, doing a solo. I, I was still not feeling good, and now she's not feeling really well tonight. Um, so I'd like to do some prayer tonight as we begin. Uh, I know that there's there's some people that need some prayer. I know that uh, my um, my grandmother uh, is still having some issues with her ear. I'd like to pray for her. Uh, I'd like to definitely pray for Miranda uh, with some healing in some areas that the Father knows about. Uh, I've got two people that uh, that I know. One lost a grandmother today. One last one lost a grandfather today. So I'd like to be praying for those. Uh, and if you're in the comments, if you're live with us uh, right now, I'm not sure who all's on. I, I uh, have too many screens to keep up with it. So if you want to get my attention, say something in the comments. I'll be able to see that. Uh, and if you have a prayer request, we'll we'll go ahead and pop those through. I know that there's about a 20 second delay. So I'll, I'll uh, I will uh, ramble for a little bit while if you have a prayer request, type that in and we'll we'll add that to the mix here just for a second. So. Uh, we're excited to have you here. We're excited to be back. This uh, we are working on uh, Shalom Miranda, Hallelujah, Shalom Lynn Hobbs. Uh, so we are working on phasing this live broadcast that we're doing on Facebook. We announced this. We had actually announced this back at the beginning of February that uh, March we would be transitioning to YouTube. However, uh, things went awry for us in in uh, pretty much most of February and the. Beginning part of March, and we're not able to do that. So we want to make sure we give people ample time uh, in watching these. So if you're watching this live tonight, know that we're going to start doing these uh, probably in April. Maybe uh, maybe Passover, maybe our Passover service. We'll do that first one live on YouTube. So if you haven't gone to our YouTube page, go to www.youtube.com slash the letter C slash again and then the way remnant and you'll find our page or you can just do a search the way remnant will come up hit that subscribe button uh, and if you're watching this on youtube make sure you hit the thumbs up go ahead and give us a like and share this out uh, the more people that we have like the videos uh, the more uh, distribution it goes out and we would we would encourage that so that's good stuff all right well i've given enough time i think uh if, if uh the ones that are in the the audience right now I uh, had some prayer requests. I think we already have them. So we're just going to go pray right now. So let's uh, let's open up just with some word of prayer. Ask, we're we're going to invite the, the Father's Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, to come in and lead and guide and direct us tonight to open our eyes. And we're also going to pray for those other folks. So let's just go before the Father. Yehovah, Creator, Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua. And we ask, Lord, that you would just move upon us tonight, Father. Bless us with your spirit. Move on the inside of us and open us up to your word. Open us up to your spirit. Help us to be led. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to be taught by you. We ask that you uh, open us up, Father God, tonight, that we would be able to, to shake off bands of traditions of men and things and erroneous doctrine and just all kind of uh, her you know, just heresies, Father God, that we, we may not even be aware of. Father, I pray for healing right now in the name of Yeshua. I pray over Miranda right now in the name of Yeshua. I pray for healing. Father, I pray over Miranda's dad, Stephen, with uh, with his throat issue. I ask that you heal him and move upon him. 
Father, I pray in the spirit now, I pray that you would move and touch all of our families. Father God, if, if people are tuning in, you can agree with me. This is a concern in your family as well. Father, I pray for our families. I plead the blood of Yeshua, the blood of Jesus over their lives. And Father God, I ask that you help them come into the covenant. I pray, Father God, that you're able to rip the blinders off of their eyes and, 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 and allow them to not only hear your voice, but to see your word. Father, we pray for protection. We ask that you protect our loved ones. We ask that you give us wisdom in how we're to proceed in every day. And we are so thankful, Father God. I pray over my grandmother and ask for healing in her ears. Ask that you dry up that infection right now in the name of Yeshua. Oh, Father, we have some friends, uh, Lord, that, have, that are going through tremendous issues with their families. Father, we have, uh, I have a friend that has lost their, her grandmother, and I have another friend that's lost her grandfather today. And I ask, Father, that you move upon both of them and their families and bless them and allow your spirit to come in and comfort them. We thank you for these things, Father, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise y'all. Praise y'all. Well, this feels different not having, having Miranda right here. I've been in ministry for 30 years. I'm used to usually minister by myself, but I... I have to confess, I'm quite used to having her right here with me now. So, amen. Uh, excited to be here tonight. Thank you. And guys, welcome to welcome back to Tour Tuesday. Uh, we're excited. Listen, just to give you an update, uh, still going with our Hebrew classes. Uh, we are in chapter uh, chapter nine right now. It is amazing. Uh, I have you know been learning the differences between a a regular degesh and a doubling degesh. We've learned. Uh, uh, about a schwa and uh, a moving schwa and, a, and one that's, that doesn't move. Uh, learning all kinds of things. Learning about a uh, kamatz, uh, kamatz katan. I mean, just all kind of thing. All kind of neat stuff. And so, listen, I, I encourage you. If you're a serious student of the word and want to learn Hebrew, uh, it's, it's a small investment. We don't get paid anything. They're not a paid advertiser or anything like that. But the Israeli Institute for Biblical, uh, uh, gosh, I forget what, Biblical something, Foundation or something, but uh, that's who we're going through. And they, they have all their courses are accredited through the Hebrew University. Uh, we do all the courses online with a Zoom call. Uh, and just the knowledge that, uh, that we're getting out of these Hebrew classes are tremendous. Uh, and, and already I have learned things in, in learning Hebrew that have counteracted a lot of things that we have learned on or heard on YouTube or on Facebook from some people that claim to know and understand Hebrew. And wow, our eyes are being opened. I mean, we're learning Hebrew from people that uh, or, or grow up learning Hebrew. Uh, you know, that's like if, uh, you know, I'm from Texas, guys, and, you know, uh, it would be odd for me to try to learn how to do barbecue by going to uh, New York. Or Boston. Boston's not known for their barbecue. They're known for their the seafood and different things like that, you know, or the, the cream pies. Oh, those are good. Um, but, you know, where do you go to learn barbecue? You go to Texas, you go to Kansas, you go to, to the Carolinas, you, know, you go to the different places that have, or that are known for barbecue. Well, where's the best place to learn Hebrew? Is that from someone that, uh, you know, uh, just maybe took a course in, in uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know, somewhere in the states here. No, you want to go. You want to go to where they speak it, and so we, we've. Uh, that's where we're going. We're going on uh, online every Monday, uh, taking those courses, and they have been really, really good. So uh, it's twelve hundred fifty bucks for a for a course. It's third. It's a thirty week course, and I highly, highly recommend it. If you if you want some more information on that, send me a. Send me a message. I'll be happy to provide it. Again, we don't make anything off of it, uh, but I, I just think it's a good product. And I'd like to uh, just to let you guys know that, that there are some resources out there where you can actually learn real Hebrew and not uh, not just the stuff you get off of fa uh, Facebook or YouTube. Actual uh, accredited teachers. And uh, just it's amazing what, uh, what the things you can learn. Okay, 
Hallelujah. Well, great. Let's let's dig in tonight. Tonight, guys, we are uh, we're going to talk about gardening 101, the life of a believer. Now, look, I, I don't anticipate this being a long message. Uh, I know sometimes, uh, you know, uh, some folks are not quite used to, you know, uh, a full course meal. They're used to more of a happy meal or fast food when they go to church. Uh, and we typically do go a little bit longer, dig in a little bit deeper. But tonight's a real, or to me, I, I, I don't see this going very long. And it, it's a real precise message. Uh, there's a lot of allegory to it. But I want you to really dig in and listen to what the Word has to say and relate it to your life. Your life. Not, not your neighbor's life. Not your wife's life. Not your, not your kid's life. Although uh, these will relate to those. I want you to sit back tonight, take some notes, and listen to this, and ask the Father to reveal this to you about your garden, your life as a garden. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight, folks. Uh, first, uh, we're going to get in that Gardening 101, Life of a Believer. Now look, we've got a nice little picture here. I didn't do a big, big pr uh, presentation on, uh, on my PowerPoint tonight, and uh, this is the only picture. So soak up this picture and enjoy it right now while we can. This is a beautiful little garden. It's got some raised beds. Uh, the grass is cultivated. You see really nice green things growing everywhere. And listen, guys, this is a beautiful garden. It's a beautiful garden. And the person that has taken the time, you can look at this garden and understand they took some time. If if you've ever grown a garden, what's what you've got weeds, you've got You've got varmints trying to come in and eat things. You got you have all kinds of stuff going on. So we can look, if you've ever done gardening, you can look at this garden already and say, you know what? This person has taken some time. Hallelujah. Let's go in and see what, uh, what we can learn about gardening 101 in the life of a believer. So our first scripture, guys, is Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 9. I want us to read this together. Now listen. Sometimes I'll ask you, I may ask you to do some things that maybe sound a little odd, but I want to ask you to read along with me and read this verse, okay? Uh, because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So if we want faith to come in our life, we, a lot of times, you know, we just read the stuff in our, we just read it with that inner voice in our mind, right? Well, listen, we need to speak out his word so our ears can hear it. And that's how faith starts to come. Not only can you be inspired by listening to a preacher or someone expound upon the word or someone teach upon the word, you can be inspired as you speak the word over yourself and the Father will give you revelation. So tonight, we're going to read, the, we're going to read our scriptures together. So let's read along with me and let's read Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 9. Be not deceived. Wow, God doesn't want us being deceived. Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. All right? So if you're if you're wanting uh, to reap corruption, this these are the instructions on how to reap construct you know, uh, corruption. How many of you guys want to reap you know corruption? No, you don't don't raise your hand. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. So if you're wanting to reap corruption, this is the way to do that. Okay, but then Paul, Paul stops. He says, but he that soweth to the spirit, okay, uh, in the Greek it's pneuma. He that soweth to the pneuma, or in the, in the Hebrew it would be the ruach. He that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So how many of you want to reap life everlasting? Okay, now here you can raise your hand. Here, don't raise it on corruption. So if you want the instructions on how to reap life everlasting, it says that you should sow to the Spirit, not to the flesh. Okay, we'll talk about this stuff here in just a minute. And the, the rest of the scripture says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So there's some things that we can pull off of that real quick before we go to the next slide. Uh, if you've ever planted a garden, you know, you put the seed in, you, throw, you, you, you cover it up, you put a little water on it, 
and then bam, like in five minutes, you have you have a huge corn stalk. You're pulling the ears of corn off. You're slathering some butter. You're putting some Tonys on it, and you're no, that, that's not how it happens, is it? No, you 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 plant some corn. You you, you bury it up. You water it. And then it, it takes time and you have to you have to take care of that place and allow it to grow. This is what it's talking about. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not, right? What was the what was the what was the first command that was uh, that was given? You know, many people will say, Oh, that, that was uh, for them not you know, Adam not to eat of the tree of uh, of life that was in the center of the garden. Well, he was in a garden, but that was not the first command given. The first one of the first commands given was to, to guard or to keep the garden, to take dominion over the garden and keep it and 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 dress it. Okay, that was the that was the first commands given to to, to mankind uh, to do. And so we're taking all of this knowledge, all of these all of these ideas that we see in Scripture, we're going to take tonight and apply to my life your life, right? All right, so first scripture is be not deceived. God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you if you want corruption in your life, sow to the flesh. Okay, that's, if you want life everlasting, sow to the spirit. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Let's go to the next slide. All right, uh, this, this next slide is the parable of the sower. Very popular. Uh, most folks have heard this one time. We're not going to get into the whole scripture right here. We'll talk about more in just a minute, but uh, let's read through this. I want you to read it, read it along with me. How many of you are reading it along with me, right? Okay, Matthew 13, 1 through 9. That same day, Jesus, or you may say Yeshua, that's his Hebrew name. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Great crowds assembled around him so that he went into a boat and sat there. And the whole assembly stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, listen, a sower went out to sow. Okay, farmer goes out to sow some seeds. A sower goes and went out to sow. While he sowed, some seeds fell beside the path. Somebody say the path. And the birds came and devoured them. But the other seeds fell upon rocky ground. Say rocky ground. Where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they did not have deep soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and because they did not take root, they withered away. Some seed fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked them. But other seeds fell onto good ground and produced gain, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times as much. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Now let's 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 think about this just real quick before we're going to get Shalom Corliss, good to see you. Uh, let's think about these different types of soil and and the results. We're going to dig in to the meaning of these each each four of these soils in just a second, but let's just go through and see the results. The first seed fell upon a path, and the birds came and devoured them. You know how many of you people, how many of you guys know someone that uh, that went to church like you know maybe once or. Just maybe not even going to church, and and just the devil is just beating them up. They have a horrible life. They have just everything hitting them all the time. Well, listen, this person's life is like that, where they had the the, the seed falling along the path, and the, the birds or the enemies comes and just tears them up. Right? I, I'm thinking of the uh, the movie with uh, Alfred Hitchcock and the birds. I mean, those birds were tearing him up. Uh, the the second type of soil, the rocky ground. It says that they uh, they were they didn't because of the of the, the the lack of the soil it was rocky you know uh, the, the roots couldn't go down and it says they withered away now these are some people that maybe you know gone to church a little bit but you know maybe they they just withered away right um, next next one is uh, actually some some okay seed some okay soil but there were thorns growing up all around them. Uh, and the Bible says the, the thorns grew up and choked them. Um, think about this. Do you, do you know some people that have ever, you know, that, that you saw that was in ministry, in church all the time? But then all of a sudden, you know, five, ten years later, they're, they're not in church at all. Or maybe they're, they're not even walking, uh, you know, uh, with the Lord. They're not even walking with, with Yah. They're not talking. They're not even in the Word anymore. 
uh, maybe they've gone back to back to the ways of the world. Maybe they're even denying Yeshua as, as Messiah. Well, what went on there? Well, these thorns grew up and literally choked the life out of what God was doing in them. And that's not good. We're going to talk about that. Last is the ones that fell on good, good ground and produced, uh, produced grain. And so they, they produced a harvest. They produced fruit. Uh, and we'll, so let's, let's dive into this, guys. I'm going to, let's see, let me switch. Normally I can do this a little bit better here. We're going to switch our scenes. We're going to go to, do I even have that? I don't even know. I don't know. Okay. I don't have that scene here. All right. Okay. Well, let's go to the next one. We're going to click here and I will take off our webcam right here just for a moment. There we go. That's easy enough to do. So listen, guys, Yah speaks to us in ways and methods that we can understand. Today, we're speaking into your life via gardening, okay? Yah did this himself. He, he opens up uh, Barashit, he opens up Genesis, talking about a garden. Genesis chapter 2 and 3 talks, is starting to talk about the garden. That's Listen, you can get every major doctrine that goes on in the book of Genesis, okay? He starts off with a garden. Yeshua talks about... Uh, uh, you know, sowing seeds, gardening. The, the Apostle Paul speaks to about gardening. Okay, Paul, Paul is uh, you know, he's speaking about sowing and reaping, either in the flesh or the spirit. Uh, Yeshua is talking about where the seeds fall, what kind of soil, what kind of obstacles may hinder their growth. Okay, what can we learn today from our Father about our lives as it relates to gardening? So that's our focus today. I want you to really uh, kind of think on this, guys, as we go through this message. Very short message tonight, but I want you to really listen. Listen like you had six sets of ears, okay? Step one. There's a couple parts to this step, but let's, let's go through the parable of the sower first. And let's talk about what kind of soil do you have, all right? The first kind of soil that was mentioned was the one that was by the path. This is the one that the birds came and ate up the seed. This type of soil has, has no cultivation, okay? If you're, if you're walking along a sidewalk or you're walking along a road, you, you can tell that the ground has not been broken up at all. There's no places to plant the seed. It's just, it's just, it's just it, it, you know, sometimes it's almost just like the pavement that you're next to. No cultivation has gone on. It has not been prepared to receive any seed. It's just, it's just ground, okay? Uh, the seed sown just lays on top of the ground. So if you're out and you and you have this seed that goes out and it's right there by the ground, I'm, uh, listen, it's it's just sitting out there, right right out in, in the open. It's it's nothing for the enemy to come down. So maybe maybe this person, you know, uh, is this you? Are you running from God? Have you do you purposely avoid His voice? Uh, listen, your your ground may not have even been broken up to receive from Him, right? So you need to, you need to, if, if this is you, if you're kind of running around with your hands on your ears, you, you, you know, you don't want to hear from God. Well, listen, if you've not allowed him to place, uh, him place in your life at all, don't be surprised when you do not receive a harvest. You have set up the conditions in your garden. Your life is a garden. Okay. Have you allowed God to come in and break up? The, the soil in your life, to break it up, to, to, to form the rows, you know, uh, you, you have to have a place for those rows so you can put the seed down in it, so you can cover them up, you know, uh, if not, the, the, the birds will come down, and if you don't cover them up right, then the little animals will come around and grab them, so there's, there's all kinds of illustrations that we can get from this. If your soil is the kind that's by the path, you are the easiest for the enemy to keep from getting a harvest, okay? How many of you want a harvest? You know, we talked about that harvest a while ago. If you want the, the harvest of eternal life, everlasting life, then you need to sow to the Spirit, right? And to sow to the Spirit, you need to, you need to allow the Father to come in and break up that, that ground in your life so that He can begin the process of growing His seed, which is the Word of God, in your life. All right, so that's the first one. That's the first kind of soil. Second kind of soil is rocky ground. Now, we're not talking about Rocky Balboa. We're talking about 
Listen, I uh, we did a garden down in Round Rock, Texas, and that's right in the hill country. And so every time we would take our our, our hoe out to start trying to, to dig into the ground, you're hitting rocks. Uh, and, and I know there's a lot of rocks up here in West Virginia. So I'm sure if you guys are trying to go in and till the ground and get that ground prepared or break it up the first time, you're going to get tons and tons of rocks, right? Well, this type of soil, this rocky ground soil, okay, this is the one that wasn't deep enough because of all the rocks and the, you know, the hard clay like rocks and stuff. This type of soil has had some exposure long ago to the plow, right? It's rocky. It's been, it, maybe there was a plow that went through it at one time, but the owner of the garden has not allowed the plow to come back. Maybe they only, maybe they only did one pass, right? Uh, years ago, we bought a, um, a little small rotor tiller. It was, it was like the, one of the little tiny ones and you had to put, uh, there was some sand that you had to put in the, in one of the containers to kept, you know, to give it a little bit of weight. Because if you just went across real fast, you, you know, the, the first pass, you're just, you're not even doing anything. You're barely breaking through the grass. You have to allow that thing to sit there and kind of work and chew through and, and, and work up the ground. Uh, and so this, this type of person has the rocky ground. Maybe they've allowed the father to come in maybe with one pass. Uh, and maybe that maybe they were at a church and the guy running the rotor tiller or the plow, maybe he was a little rough on them. Maybe they got hurt in church. Maybe they didn't like how things were going on. And the owner of the garden thought that this was either too hard to go through. Oh, this is just too much work. Or they suffered greatly at the hands of those who are, were operating the plow. And then they, then they started to think, you know what, maybe this is the way the father does stuff. If this is the way the plow, you know, the, the, the person that maybe they, maybe they were in a church and they got hurt by a preacher. Maybe they got hurt by someone in the church. And now they think that, okay, that's, that's the way the father does all this. Well, listen, that, that's not necessarily the way the father does stuff. So we need to allow the father to come in with the plow and break up some fallow ground, break up that ground in our life, break up those rocks, take the rocks out and begin to till the soil to make it to where it can receive not only the seed, but the water of life to flow into it, right? What's it take for a seed to grow? It takes really good soil, right? And it also takes, takes sunshine and it also takes water. Well, Yeshua says that he's, he's, the, he's that water, right? We'll talk about that. Yeshua is the water of life. He's also, he's also the, uh, um, the, the, <laughs> the sun rays, the sun, S-O-N shine. We'll talk about that in a minute. But listen, this, this type of ground, this, this type of ground is represented by someone that's been hurt uh, or, or they have uh, unforgiveness in their heart. And that's, that's what rules their garden. And so they're like, yeah, you know, I tried that, I tried that Jesus thing one time, or I tried that God thing, and it's just a bunch of hypocrites at church. Well, that, that's true. A lot of hypocrites at church. And if they were outside of church, they wouldn't be hypocrites. So don't throw away your eternity because of some other people being a hypocrite. Okay? Maybe you've been hurt. Maybe there's unforgiveness in your life. Uh, I, I see unforgiveness as one of the major things that holds people back uh, from receiving things from God, you know, part of part of the Aviv prayer, part of the uh, the, uh, the 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 Father's prayer that Yeshua Jesus taught us, He said to forgive us our debts as we forgive others. Okay, Yeshua talks about that if you're not able to forgive your uh, neighbor, forgive someone that's done something to you, if you can't forgive them, how can you expect? to receive forgiveness for yourself. Jeff, is that a works-based salvation? Well, it's a covenant relationship. God says, you want me to forgive you? Then you need to walk in forgiveness. He gave the illustration of the, of the, uh, of the man that owed a lot of money to this one guy. And this one guy is like, you know what? I, I know you're going through a rough patch. I want to forgive you of your debt. Now, this guy immediately goes and finds some. He's super excited, but he, he immediately goes and finds someone that owes him a smaller debt. And he takes that person and he grabs them and he takes them before the judge and he throws them into debtor's prison. Well, when the judge finds out about this, uh, the others, this other judge finds out about this, he's like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I, I forgave you of a much greater debt, but you didn't forgive this other person of their debt to you. You know what? I'm I'm reversing that decision 
and now you're being thrown in. And, and, and so, listen, forgiveness is a big deal. It hardens your heart. It turns your, your cultivated soil, it turns it hard towards the things of God. And once your soil becomes hard towards the things of God, it, it's, not, it's, it's not easy for the watering of the Word of God to come in and provide those nutrients in your life. Okay? If, if you've ever gone to a desert area, whether it's in Jerusalem, whether it's in Arizona, you know, the, the ground is very hard. And they have issues that when it's very hard like that, and then all of a sudden it gets a massive rain, well, it rains so much that the the ground, because it's so hard, it, it's hard for it to soak in that, that life-giving water. And what happens? That life-giving water just turns into a torrent on that piece of land. Well, listen, have you ever gone to church or have you ever been listening to a message and you're you're like not wanting to receive that message and then all of a sudden you walk away from that area and your life is in a torrent. It, it just It's just all, everything is just going crazy and you want to blame the devil. Well, don't blame the devil. Blame yourself because you have hardened your heart to the word of God and to God's plowing of your life. And so when the word, the washing of the word tries to come in and penetrate you and soak into your soul to make it where it can grow well, your, your hardness or my hardness causes us to repel that word. And we just, we get deeper and deeper into a place. Jeff, how can we get out of that? We can go to the Father and we can ask for forgiveness. We can forgive our fellow man, our, fe our neighbor of the offenses that has come onto our life. But Jeff, you don't understand what they did to me. It was wrong. It, it, it may have been wrong. And you may, you may have a very valid point that they used you. But Yeshua said, if someone comes to you and strikes you on your cheek, you're supposed to turn to him your other cheek. If someone comes to you and, and tries to take your coat, you give them your, you give them your uh, other clothes as well. It's a different mindset from what the Father's economy is, how he does things, his, his operating system compared to the world system. Our problem is, is that we have been raised up in the world system. We've been taught how to respond to each other in the world system. We've been taught how to interact with each other in business and in life's dealings as the world does things, as Babylon or Egypt, you know, whatever uh, allegory or picture you want to look at. However, God says, I, I'm different. I'm set apart. I have a different way of doing things. And I want you to follow after my instructions. My ways are different or higher than your ways, right? They're different than the world's ways. They're, they're different from the ways that you think in your heart. Follow after the word. Allow him to come in and break up. So if you've got some hurts that have gone on in a church, listen, forgive that. Forgive that pastor. Forgive that, you know, maybe it was a deacon-possessed church. Maybe you, know, you were offended by a deacon. Maybe maybe someone didn't shake your hand right or something. I don't know. Forgive that person and, and walk away from those hurts. And understand that, listen, there's going to be people that are going to do stupid stuff. They're going to wrong people. Just because you're following God doesn't mean that everything's going to go right. If, if you don't understand that, ask Stephen. You know, Stephen was just preaching the word. He ends up getting stoned and killed. For the word. Um, all right, so hurt and forgiveness rule this type of garden. This person has been hurt by others in the church and then project this behavior onto the father incorrectly. And thus, uh, in their minds, they justly reject his water. And again, that's, that's how they begin to get hard. So do not be surprised when you do not receive a harvest because you have set up the conditions uh, in your garden. What is your garden like? What is going on in your sphere of influence, your life, your garden? How is that soil in your garden? Listen, it, it, it's no one's fault how the soil is except for I'm in charge of my garden. 
you are in charge of your garden. Do you, where do you spend most of your time? We're going to talk about, let's go to the next one. We'll talk about that. All right. Next, next, uh, next kind of soil. It was, it was kind of decent soil. It's growing things. Okay. But it, it had a lot of thorns in it. Right. And the Bible says it choked out, uh, it choked out the life. Right. So this type of soil has been cultivated, right? It's been broken up. You know, the, most of the big rocks are probably out of it. It's 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 been it's it's been receiving water. It's been receiving the water of life, but maybe it's also receiving some other waters. We're going to talk about that. Yeshua says that the cares and the lust or the desires of this world come in and literally choke out the life of the seed that has taken root. Uh, let me read this paragraph and then we'll dig into this. This soil has potential. However, it, it receives equally from the world and the Father. Okay? How do we know this? Because it, there are thorns growing up in this garden. Now, guys, listen. I'll be very honest. I've, I've planted a lot of gardens. And one of the things that's very easy to get overwhelmed in when you're gardening are weeds and thorns and all kind of stuff. Right? These seeds, uh, birds fly over and, and bring them in, right? You know, whether it's in, you know, maybe there, it was in their uh, excrement or maybe maybe some of these seeds blow in from your neighbor's yard, all kinds of things. And because that ground has been tilled, it's been, it's maybe been fertilized, it's been watered. Well, these things begin to, to, to grow up and they'll grow up amongst the good, the good seed, right? Well, what happens in this type of environment? Listen, if you go a long ways and you're not putting, picking those those weeds out, if you've ever done a garden, if you don't go in and, and do the weeding to get out the thorns, notice that if you don't do the weeding, that the plant's not going to do the weeding, you have to go in and do the weeding. If you don't go in and weed that garden, the good things that you're trying to grow will be starved. They'll be choked out because the thorns will grow up among them. They'll take over, they'll, they'll, they'll be a little bit more leafy. They'll, they'll take over more shade. All of these things will go, will go on and happen. And then what happens, the good things that you're trying to grow are choked out, right? Well, listen, guys, this is, you know, no man can be two masters. You know, we need to stop allowing the enemy's seeds, the thorns, to be planted in our garden. If you begin to see these things sprout up, you got to go, you have to go pull the weeds out, Right? Oh, sometimes you may not recognize the thorn. You know, when the thorn's first growing up in, in, in the area, you, you, may not, you may not be able to tell the difference between it and the regular deal, right? So how can you tell what, what a thorn is? Listen, don't be surprised if you don't receive a, a harvest if you're not going in and weeding this, this garden, this soil, because you have set up the condition in your garden. How do we recognize thorns in our garden? How do we recognize these things? Well, they are, they are growing up and they're beginning to take over the thing that we know is a good seed. There's some examples of that, guys. Uh, remember, I, I'm talking about that it uh, this, this garden receives equally from the world and the Father. It's bringing in the seed of the Word of God and it's also bringing in the seed from the world or maybe from the enemy. And these things begin to grow and they begin to fight over who has predominance in your garden. Yeshua said that no man can serve two masters. You either love one and hate the other or love the other and hate, you know, and hate the one. So it's, it's different. You know, it, it becomes a contest. So what's the, what's the picture here? Well, what, how do you, how do you receive seed into your garden, right? You receive it by seeing it into your eyes. You, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, right? So if you spend more time listening to the things of the world, uh, maybe the world system, okay? You are allowing the enemy seed to overtake what you're receiving from God. How, you know, listen, it, um, let's look at it like this. Let's Let's say you are, spending most of your time uh, uh, watching TV, watching the news, okay? And instead of what, instead of hearing God's word and, and researching God's word and studying God's word, 
right? We're told to meditate on his word day and night. We're told to study, to show ourselves approved. A workman needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're told to, uh, you know, I think I said meditate day and night on his word. We're told to, uh, in, in the Shema, we're told to, as we, as we go up and we walk down the way, we're talking to it, talking to the, our sons and our daughters about the word and, and, and the kingdom of God. All of these things we're told over and over again, that's, that's our direction. It's different than the world. This is our focus. But maybe, maybe some of us, when's the last, well, gosh, guys, I'm not picking on you, but I'm just asking you a question tonight. When's the last time that you actually sat down and studied the word of God versus when's the last time that you watched, uh, watched a news program? Okay. Or look at it like this, percentage wise in your life, your life is like a, a, a pie. You know, uh, maybe you maybe you do like, you know, okay, I, I go to church on Saturday or I go to church on Sunday and I'm in there studying the word for three hours or maybe an hour. I don't know, however long your church service is. Okay, but what do you do for the rest of the week? Well, I, I really like to keep up on current events. Okay, well, current events are okay. But listen, are you are you more infatuated with that than the word of God? What is going to save you in the end? What, what did Paul say? If you want to reap corruption, so to the flesh, so to the things of the world. If you want to reap everlasting life, so to the spirit, so to the things of Yah, the things of God. Don't be in dismay. Don't be, don't be, in, don't be in a surprise with what kind of a harvest you're going to reap. It's your garden. What are you allowing to be planted in your garden every day? You know, uh, when when I first met Miranda, um, gosh, a couple years now, that's great. When I first met Miranda, she challenged me on something. She said, because I, I would just watch any kind of movie, um, you know, any kind of violence, you know, or, or whatever, you know, if it... Even if it had a little bit of nudity in it, I would justify it and say, you know, I'm, I'm, I just won't watch that part of it and we'll just go right on. You know, because uh, I, I like the stories. I did like the stories. I like the stories they told. Um, but she challenged me and she said, you know, Jeff, uh, I found in my life that I was being desensitized to the things that were sinful. And I was desensitized so much that I could see those things and they wouldn't bother me. And I got to, I really got to thinking about that. I worked, I worked for two years in a, uh, in a county jail as a sergeant. And I heard the most foul language, whether it was, you know, what we call curse words or whether it was descriptive stories or confessions from, uh, you know, uh, there was one time that I was, uh, uh, at the, at my desk and we were booking a guy in, he begins to confess to me how he had been molesting these children. Uh, you know, and I had to sit there with a straight face without getting up and punching this guy out, uh, and just write down all of his confessions. And then after that, we called the, uh, uh, district attorney and got, uh, got even more charges placed against this guy. But you, you grow accustomed to hearing these things and, and you should be offended by them. You should be screaming out and, and upset. You know, if, if you see all this grotesque violence or you're seeing, uh, or you're hearing things that are blasphemous or you're hearing things that are, or you're seeing things that you shouldn't be seeing that lead to lustful thoughts or fornication or adultery. You're, you're allowing these seeds to come into your life. And there's no wonder that, that, uh, uh so many Christians have trouble with fornication, pornography, adultery, uh, homosexuality, uh, theft, uh, just all kinds of things going on. And, and, and you know, you know, you have, you have pastors uh, all of a sudden that have been faithful to their wives and to the church for years. And all of a sudden they're, they're sleeping with their church secretary, right? All these different things come up. How do they come up? Because we are not careful for the things that we are planting into our gardens. And listen, if you sow to the flesh, you will reap corruption okay so brother jeff how do i how guys listen we're this would be maybe some 
some uh, some topic that uh, that we need to kind of watch out for our children. So I'll if children are watching, maybe have them turn away for just a couple seconds. I want to talk about something. Five, four, three, two, one. Listen, if you're an adult and you're dealing with pornography or you're dealing with masturbation or you're dealing with these different types of sexual sin in your life, okay, you need, you know, how, Brother Jeff, how do I get delivered? Well, one thing is you need to pray and repent, okay? That means to turn from your sin and flee from it, okay? The next thing is you need to ask for deliverance, you know, have someone help you pray for some deliverance and get, because you've actually opened the doors in your life uh, uh, for demonic activity to latch on to you, to hold on to you, uh, and to bring things back over and over and again. You need to get that broken off your life. But then the third thing you need to do, you need to start governing and guarding your eyes and your ears from allowing these things to come into your life and be planted in your garden. You know, uh, if, if you want to stop uh, doing, uh, you know, with the masturbation, or maybe you can't control uh, yourself and you're running out and committing adultery, or you're running out fornicating all the time. Well, what are you planting in your garden consistently? Are you wrapped up? Are you, are you addicted to pornography? Listen, I know so many ministers that have been uh, addicted to pornography. I was addicted to pornography until the Father delivered me. Delivered me. God can deliver you from pornography. God can deliver you from masturbation. God can deliver you from fornication. God can deliver you from adultery. But you have to do those three things. Ask for forgiveness. You need to be delivered. And then you need to guard and govern your eyes and your ears from allowing these seeds to be planted in your garden. These are, Yeshua said, the cares and or the lust of the world grew, or, or, or some of these other seeds that were planted by the enemy that you, me, allowed to grow in our gardens. And these thorns were growing up and constantly trying to choke out the life. And listen, if... If you are wanting to watch the, watch the correlation here with your garden, you may say, Father, forgive me, and God forgives you. And you say, okay, Father, forgive me, and all of a sudden he forgives you, and you go and rip out that thorn bush. It hurts. It hurts, right? Maybe you get some cuts on your hand. Well, <coughs> if you haven't been delivered of that, or then all of a sudden you just allowed some more seeds to come in, you're going to get another harvest of that. And so that's why so many uh, men and women in the body of Messiah ride this roller coaster where it deals with sexual impurity. It's because we, either out of laziness or we don't want to fully change, we do not govern what comes before our eyes and what comes into our ears, what is being planted in our garden. Thorns. This type of soil has been cultivated. How many of you know really good ministers that have fallen? How many of you know whether they fall into sexual sin, whether they fall into greed? You know, all of these different things they've allowed to come into their life and they've allowed to flourish right up with the Word of God. And then all of a sudden, God's Word is just being choked out. The life is being choked out. You don't believe it could happen to you? Listen, it happened to Stephen. Uh, I'm sorry, it happened to Nicholas. One of the first seven deacons, Acts chapter 6, verse 24, talks about Nicholas. He was a, um, he, I won't get into all of Nicholas, but Nicholas becomes the leader of the Nicolaitans. And in the book of Revelation, Yeshua, Jesus, talks about how he hates the deeds and the theology, the works of the Nicolaitans. If you've, uh, if, listen, let's see, uh, we'll, we'll point right up here, okay? There, we'll do a, uh, a thing on YouTube pointing to our three-part series that we had on the who are the Nicolaitans and Marcionism, uh, Nicolaitans and Marcionism on the road to heresy. I think that's the playlist, but we'll look into that, guys. That's a, that's a big deal. Nicholas was full of the Holy Spirit, full of wisdom. He was, he was doing really good. He was thoroughly saved, spirit-filled, operating in the supernatural, operating in the wisdom of God, but yet, uh, you know, some 10 to 20, 30 years later, we find that he is a complete heretic having walked away from his faith and causing others to fall, right? 
What happened to Nicholas? Right, right down here, the thorns. The thorns happened to Nicholas. He allowed the seed of the enemy to be planted into his garden. How do we have people like, I'll call out Justin Best, uh, different ones that have uh, now are uh, denying Yeshua as Messiah. They've allowed the thorns of erroneous doctrine to be planted into their uh, garden. And now it's flourished so much that they are actually denying Yeshua, Jesus, as Messiah. Think about that. We met people like that. We met, uh, I wish Miranda was here. She might be able to help me remember the guy's name. But we met a guy uh, when we were going to one of the mounds. I think we went to the Serpent Mounds in Ohio. And we met a guy that had gone, he was uh, charismatic. And then he went to, uh, he became Torah observant. and But he kept. He kept just shucking everything out. He ended up becoming New Age and rejecting Messiah altogether. It happens, people. How? <clears throat> because we allow the seeds of the enemies to, to grow up. So how do you recognize these thorns? They begin to steal away the energy. Listen, if your walk is not where it used to be, if your walk is, is waning, check your garden for thorns. Where do you spend most of your time? Do you spend most of your time in the Word of God? Do you spend most of your time in, in His presence? Are you in, 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 are you in worship? Are you in praise? Or is most of your time on YouTube, on uh, watching the news, uh, watching TikTok? Uh, maybe it's a hobby or a habit that you have. Listen, there, there's <laughs> you can watch uh, you can watch the news. You can watch some things on TikTok. You can you know different things you can do. But where where is your focus? I'll give you a quick testimony about uh, Smith Wigglesworth. Uh, Lester Summerall was super excited to go meet uh, Smith Wigglesworth for the very first time. Man, he was super, super excited. He goes over to London, goes over to England to meet uh, Smith. And he shows up early. As he's walking, there's a newspaper that uh, the newspaper guy had thrown out and landed on uh, Smith's uh, area close to his house. Uh, Lester Summerall mistakenly thinks that it's the newspaper for Smith. So he folds it up, puts it under his arm. He opens a little uh, picket gate, walks up to the door, knock, knock, knock. And here's Smith Wigglesworth, massive man of God, right? He opens the door and the first thing he, he does, instead of saying, uh, for, before he welcomes his brother, he says, take that newspaper out of here. It will not enter my house. The only thing that comes into this house is the Word of God. Smith didn't even have a TV. He would not even allow a newspaper into his house because he said, I have too much to learn and study in the Word of God. I don't have time for that nonsense. Now, that's you may think that's an extreme example, but listen, how many of you guys watch uh, Fox News, OAN, uh, CNN, MSNBC, is that your life? Is that where you're getting your inspiration from? If that's where you're getting your inspiration from, guys, that is the seed of the world. They are not promoting God's economy. They are not promoting Yah's instructions. They are promoting the ways of the world, the world's logic, the world's way of doing things. That is allowing the seed of the world to come into your garden. Those are seeds. Okay, guys, let's keep let's keep going. Sorry about that. We got a little little carried away. Pretty passionate about that <laughs> about the thorn stuff. The thorns kill people. People, you know that. How many of you know? Have you if you've known ministers that were doing great? How many of you know people that were in church on fire, and then you know five ten years later they're they're nowhere to be nowhere to be seen. The life was choked out of them. Ah, give me a little water here. Okay, guys. Step one, what kind of soil do you have? The fourth kind is the good soil. Now, this soil has allowed the Father to come in with that plow and break up that fallow ground, break up those areas in their life in order that they can receive the water of life. Okay? They've also allowed the Father uh, to order their lives, right? Where they, they come in, they maybe plant some rows to properly hold the seed. And then once that seed's planted, the father comes in as a husbandman and he, and he pushes the, the hills together and allows that water to come in. So they have, they have further watched to ensure it's only the father's seeds also being planted, not the seeds of the enemy. 
So do not be surprised when you do receive a harvest on this one because you have set up the conditions in your garden. I've known plenty of people that have started gardens and man, they look great for the first couple of weeks. But then after the first couple of weeks, they get busy. They get tired. Paul says, be not weary in well-doing for you shall reap in due season if you faint not. So we have a responsibility in our garden, our life. I'm responsible for my life. Now listen, I love Miranda. I love my daughter, Jessica. But you know what? They are responsible for their own gardens. Now, now me as Miranda's husband, uh, I'm her covering, right? Jessica used to be under my covering, but she's married to Charlie now, right? They are responsible for for their garden, right? Charlie's responsible for his, Jessica's responsible for hers, and then at the same time, Charlie has a little responsibility over hers because he's the head. Just like I have some responsibility over Miranda as her head. We have responsibility over our gardens, okay? We have a responsibility to make sure that our soil is good. We when we see that we're doing wrong, when we see that we're in error, we need to repent. And we need to allow the Father to come in and break up that ground. This is just talking about soil. We haven't even gotten into the plant yet. We're almost there. All right, let's get into that. Um, all right, so that's the that's step one. Step two, watch watching the seed coming in. Now, farmers today, if you know any, if you know read anything about farming today, there is a huge struggle with these big commercial farms, and you've got a you know a smaller farm next to it that's trying to be organic or trying to grow heirloom seeds, seeds that are non-GMO, because these GMO seeds, when they uh, you know when they sprout out or when they go to seed and they, the winds blow, it goes over to the other neighbor's garden, the other neighbor's farm, and it it corrupts their heirloom seeds that have been planted. Now listen, they, they have an active plan. I won't dig into all those kind of things. There's all kinds of ways they, they try to protect these things from happening. But it's tough. Somebody say it's tough. So we have a responsibility in our own lives, our own gardens, to protect, to guard, right, our gardens from these seeds that can be coming in. These seeds that can be coming in from the other world, right? The, the, the world that's around us. It's tough. To, you know, some people, they, they have this, this idea that, you know, if, Jeff, if I, if I just kind of go with the flow, you know, I'm just going to allow things to happen. Well, listen, I think everything's going to be okay. Listen, the devil counts on you thinking like that. We have to be active and vigilant against the ways of the enemy. Yeshua said that I wouldn't have you ignorant. Paul says I wouldn't be, I don't, you know, uh, Jesus said don't be deceived. Paul said I wouldn't have you be ignorant, right? So against the, the, the wiles, the schemes of the devil, the enemy wants to come in and corrupt the seed that is in your garden. Maybe you've worked on having that good soil, but you, we have to actively guard. Remember, what, what, guarding what we see, guarding what we hear, that's being planted in our the soil of our heart. We have to guard against that. What kind of seeds are you planting, right? God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap, right? Uh, let's look at it like this. <coughs> if you wanted corn to grow in your garden, would you plant squash seeds? Now, I know that sounds really dumb. But whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So if you're wanting to reap the things of God, the things of Yah in your life, you need to be allowing that seed of the Word of God to come into your eyes, to come into your ears, and then actively block the things of the world from coming into your garden. This is why we have so many churches. I want to, can I, can I just, can I just hit this for a minute? I'm, I'm going to hit this for a minute and get back off. So listen, you, there, there may be some trigger things that are about to go on in your life right now. 
if you are more political than you are spiritual with Yah, you are allowing the seed of the enemy to be flourishing in your life. Okay? Donald Trump is not the answer. Joe Biden is not the answer. We have a spiritual problem, and the only way that we have a solution is through Yeshua. Yeshua is our salvation. It is not Donald Trump. It is not Joe Biden. It is not the Democratic Party. It is not the Republican Party. The, the, <laughs> if you have a bird, a bird has a wing on one side and a wing on the other, okay? So we have a we have a left wing, that's the Democrat Party. We have a right wing, which is the Republican Party, but they both belong to the same bird, and they are both but they both belong to the ways and the economy of the world. They are going under the direction of the world. They are not going after the direction of Yah, the direction of God. Do not follow either one of these blindly. They are not the answer. They are not the solution. We have a spiritual problem on the earth where man has rejected what God has said to do. That's the problem that we have on the earth. And you can't force people to do the things of God. You have to minister to them, allow the Holy Spirit to come in and change their hearts. I can't change your mind. I can't. I can't convince you that you're living in sin. God can. I can bring out the Word of God and show you that. But until God delivers you and, and that's part of you also allowing God to come in and break up that fallow ground in your life it goes back to the it goes back to the types of soil listen politics that's the main religion in the United States today and it is leading men and women away from God away from Yah more pastors, pastor friends of mine, you may be watching tonight. How many, okay, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to talk to you. I'm going to tell you my testimony. Can I just do that real quick? Talking, talk, time out. We're talking politics here a little bit. I normally, normally don't even like to talk politics. Many of you guys don't know that Miranda, when Miranda and I first got together, we made a terms of the covenant. We weren't even, we weren't even hardly dating it yet. And the very first rule in the terms of our covenant was, because the, we, we both despise politics so much, that when someone begins to talk politics, we would, we would start kissing just to, just to uh, break up all the conversation about politics. <laughs> uh, I, don't know, I, don't know Miranda, I think I know Miranda remembers that, but that was, the, you know, we, we despise politics so much. But listen, guys, I used to drink that Kool-Aid. If you go on my Facebook, go on my face, Jeff Brandon, uh, Jeff Brandon on Facebook, look me up. I'll, I'll add you as a friend. Look me up. Go back on my Facebook. Go back to around 2012, 2013. I was drinking the Kool-Aid hard for the Republican Party. I believe that they had all the answers for the, for, the, uh, for the United States, and the Democrats were the devil. They were the enemy. That's what I believed. I was drinking the Kool-Aid. I was allowing these seeds of the world to come in. And one, one night, the Father just spoke to me. Not audibly, but he just spoke to my heart. And, he, and I, boy, I had just done a zinger of a post. I'm like, man, I just beat those old Democrats up. I, I, I let them have it with that post. And I was sitting there just kind of patting myself on the back. And the Father scolded me. And he said, Jeff, boy, that was, that, was, uh, that was an interesting post there that you really got them. I, I said, boy, I did. I got them. And the father said, you know, it's interesting that uh, I'm, I'm just kind of looking at all your posts here. And, you know, you, you do a post concerning my word every, every great once in a while, but it's probably like 10 to 15 to 1. How come you do so many posts about political things, but you don't really do any posts about me? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And listen, I wasn't perfect after that. There, took a, there was a time of transition and a time of, of Yah correcting me. 
But I allowed the correction of Yah to come in my life. And listen, people, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I, I am an American. I was born here. I do care about the direction of the country. If the Father speaks to me to, to do something or to vote one way or not vote one way, I'll, I'll obey what the Father speaks to me. But Yeshua said, let, you know, when he was talking, when he was asked about taxation and, and trying to be trapped into a political deal, he said, you know, let, let you see this coin whose head on, is on it, it's Caesar's. <clears throat> well, then let, let Caesar have what's Caesar's and let God have what's God's. Listen, guys, I made a choice. And God opened my eyes to that whole, it's one bird. It's got two wings. It's got a left and a right wing. But it's one bird. And that bird belongs to the world. And that bird is flying according to the ways of the world. That bird thinks according to the ways of the world. That's why you'll never see anything getting done with it. It's because they argue on this side. They argue on this side. But it's still going down the same direction. Okay. Uh, I used to I used to sing the praises of George W. Bush. I was from Texas. He was our governor for years. Go GW. Then I had my eyes open to a lot of the things that he did. You know, the Patriot Act. It's not a Patriot Act. He took away our freedoms. You know I can I'm, I'm going to stop with with my little political rant, but I want you to see something with that. If you are spending more time watching. Uh, Fox News or OAN or uh, CNN or M MSNBC or ABC. If you're, if that is where you are getting your inspiration from on a daily basis, and then you get, maybe you you crack your Bible open every every quarter in the year, or maybe you you just you listen to a program once a year. Listen, where are you getting your inspiration from? Where are you getting the seeds that are being planted in your life from? I choose to turn those things off. You know, Brandon and I don't even have cable. We don't even, we don't even watch the news. I'll pick up little tidbits here and there off of uh, uh, Google. With I'll just read some of the headlines just to kind of stay current. But it's all just mess. It's all just talk. Right? You know, what's the old saying? Talk is cheap unless you go up to Washington. So listen, politics are not the solution. Politics are a seed that's being planted by the enemy to cause distraction in your life. I know I have minister friends of mine that, that left the pulpit to go into, go into politics. Okay. I, I have minister friends of mine that they they are still where I was back in 2012 or 2013, that that is, that is their focus in their minds. And, and if you listen to their messages, if you watch most of their posts, it's politics. It's not y'all. It's not God. All right. Watching the seed coming in. That's step two. What kind of seeds are you planting? Plan today and keep your garden free of bad seeds. Okay, how do you do that? You govern what you're watching, you govern what you're listening to, right? Does what you're watching and what you're listening to lead you to God or does it distract you away from God? That's how you can tell if it's a bad seed. Let's keep going, guys. Allow for proper watering. A pro, uh, 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 allow for proper watering. The reason the rocky ground was rocky is they did not allow for frequent waterings. Remember, this, this is the ground that maybe the plow's gone through once or twice, but it's still, it's still all, you know, it, some of the rocks have come out, but it's real hard. How often are you allowing Yah, or are you allowing Yehovah, God, to water you with his word? You know, again, uh, maybe you're not even watching the news. Maybe you're just watching uh, funny cat videos. Okay, funny cat videos are not a sin to watch. But if that's all you're watching, you're not allowing yourself to be watered with the word. Oh, Brother Jeff, I feel so burned out. I feel so dry. Well, you, the, my, listen, I, some folks didn't like me as a pastor because I, I was pretty blunt with folks. When I was a pastor, I know one time 
I went to the dollar, uh, like the Dollar Tree or Dollar General thing, and I bought a bunch of uh, little cheap plastic baby bottles with the little screw-on nipples. And I loaded them up all the way up and down the pews. People came into church. They all thought it was kind of funny. About, oh, everybody had a baby bottle. And then we broke out into Hebrews, how you should, how at this time, you, should, you guys should be teachers of the word. How be it, you're still sucking on, on the milk. You should right now be eating steak, but you can't handle it because you're, you're not used to handling the word of God. You're so used to being watered down. You're so used to being having everything done for you, everything fed for you. Listen, the work of the fivefold ministry is to get you to where you can stand on your own two feet and not be tossed about to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Oh, there's gold dust coming down. Oh, there's oil coming out of this Bible. Oh, quit, quit with all that junk. Follow what the word has to say. Mm, I could get into all kinds of stuff. All right, rewind time down. Yeshua is our rock in the wilderness, right? The rock that was struck and provided the life-giving water in the desert, right? You know, that's why Moses couldn't go into the promised land. It's because he got upset, he got mad, and he messed up the pattern, right? We had a pattern that was going on for our lives. We had a pattern that we were lost, that we weren't following the ways of Yah, and then we were then we repented and began to follow Yah. We were immersed into the Red Sea, right? We were delivered from the world. We were immersed, water baptized in the Red Sea. We went to, to the we went to be married at Mount Sinai. We received his word at Shavuot, Pentecost, right? We received that infilling of his word, right? And then we're out in the desert. And then we're supposed to receive this word, this flooding of the word. And, and Moses was supposed to go up and strike the rock once. And then he was supposed to speak to it. In other words, the Messiah, the first coming he was going to have, he was going to be struck. The second time Messiah comes, he comes speaking as the king. But Moses hit it twice. That's why Moses couldn't go into the promised land. Yeshua is our rock in the wilderness that was struck that provides that water to come in and soak us. Listen, you, the, the, the Egypt is a desert, but the everything that's along the Nile River is green, 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 green. Why? Because it's next to life-giving waters. Are you allowing your garden to be watered with Yah's life-giving water, or are you allowing the sewage of the world the bitter waters to water. Now listen, some things can kind of grow in some sewage, right? Some, some, you know, with, we, where I live, I live in West Virginia. I live right off the Ohio River. I have been warned and warned and warned, Jeff, don't you eat any fish out of that river. I grew up on the lake. I'm, I'm used to like fishing and, and getting food out of the, out of the lake. They said, don't eat the food. Don't eat the fish. They're in the Ohio River. It's been so polluted by the world. But, but you, you know, Jeff, I, I tell you, you drive by, you got all these green trees, you got the green grass, you got things growing. Yeah, but the food is tainted. The fruit is tainted from the bitterness of the world. Allow that to sink in a little bit. Again, where, where are your seeds coming from? Where is your water coming from? Allow for proper watering from Yeshua, who is our rock in our wilderness. He is our water source. Hallelujah. Number four, guys, getting close to the end. Allow for plenty of sunshine in your life. S-O-N, shine. Sunshine in your life. Listen, plants thrive on sunlight. Okay? To get a proper tomato to grow, it has to be in full sun. I recently learned that if you plant your tomatoes, sometimes you have to, but listen, if you plant your tomatoes in a greenhouse, okay, it actually filters some of the UV rays and the tomatoes don't develop all of the nutrients that they're supposed to. You need plenty of sun, S-O-N, sunshine, sunlight in your life 
so that you can get the right chemical process on the inside of your garden going, right? Uh, uh, plants thrive on sunlight. This is where the chemical process of photosynthesis takes place. It's the same for our gardens. Sunshine or staying in his presence provides you with life, right? The scripture says in Acts 17, 28, in him, in Yeshua, in Messiah, in him we live, right? That's what a plant does. We move, it grows, and, and we have our being in him. We are allowing his presence. What are some other type, examples of sunshine? His presence his glory to envelop us, right? His anointing, right? To come in and break the yoke. Oh, that, that would be a great thing. To, I'm about to finish, so I don't want to dig into this, but the, the anointing that breaks the yoke, that, oh, that's, that's amazing. It's talking about the ox growing so much that it breaks the yoke. We, we have it different in our mindset. We think God comes down and just, just smashes the yoke. No, God allows the ox with his anointing to grow to a place that it just it snaps the yoke off of him. Maybe we'll get into that one night. That's a beautiful picture in the, in the scripture that we don't fully understand. Those are examples of allowing, uh, allowing if we are bathed in his, in his glory, his anointing, his favor, his protection, his, all of these things are part of his covenant, allowing him to do that work, allowing him to complete that work that he has began in us, allowing us to walk in the precious promises of, of Yah that, that are yea and amen in our life, allowing the sun to shine in our lives. God hasn't called us to be just like this little bitty candle, you know, this little bitty candle on the hill. He has called us to be a gigantic flame, a, a glorious bright flame shining, just radiating in the darkness. That's the picture of you allowing the sunshine to come out of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's, let's, let's wrap this up. Uh, almost there. Allowing seasons of pruning. This is painful, guys. Pruning. Every good gardener knows pruning is necessary to produce the most out of your garden. I, 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 I love the illustration of the tomato. If you guys have ever grown tomatoes, when that tomato first starts coming up, it'll have shoots all over it. Well, the first time I planted tomatoes by myself, I was so excited. I was seeing all these shoots coming off of it. I'm like, man, this is going to be great. I did not get a single tomato out of those plants that season. Not a single tomato out of those plants that season. However, I had some beautiful tomato bushes. Man, they had leaves everywhere. And I could not figure out why I didn't have any fruit. So an old man told me, he said, Jeff, when those things first start coming up, if you've got 10 or 15 of those little shoots, Pluck them all off, but maybe maybe five, maybe three. Pluck off those little suckers because they will rob the energy of the plant. And if you allow that to continue to happen, you'll get the result that I had. They just keep growing leaves. But if you take off, if you prune, right? If you prune that tomato vine, and take off of those extra vine, the, the extra little branches, the little shoots coming out, it changes direction and it begins to produce fruit. And so the next year I did that. And then I, I got to have these huge, giant, red, red, red tomatoes. They were delicious. And all because I did something that seemed illogical. I pruned off some of the, of the, of the little sprouts that were coming off. Logic would say, you know, earth logic would say, uh, hey, we well, you know, grow and the more of these things come out, the more tomatoes. No, no, no. The plant spends all the time in growing leaves. The father wants fruit. Do you want more fruit in your life? Allow y'all, allow God to come in with his pruning shears and get to work on you. Let him trim off those areas in your life that are robbing you of 
energy. John 15, 1 through 2. Read this with me. John 15, 1, 2. At the very bottom of the screen, it says, I am the true vine. Who's the I there? That's Yeshua. That's Jesus, our Messiah. He says, I am the true vine, my, and my father is the husbandman, okay, or the gardener, the one that tends the garden. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it or prunes it, that it may bring forth more fruit. How many of you want to see more fruit of God, of Yah, in your life? Allow the Father to come in with the pruning shears. It's painful, folks. The Father comes in and, and, and opens your eyes to some things that we may not be doing right. And, and he begins to trim. He begins to cut. And sometimes the things that he cuts are very dear to us. God, I really like to do that. Well, maybe you need that cut in your life right now because you're, you're giving too much time to that instead of me. You're letting that be a God to you, an idol, something that you're setting before me. You know, once you get delivered of it, maybe you can have it back in your life. Right now, you can't. You can't handle it. Allow the Father to come in and prune those areas. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's, let's finish up. Last, last slide, guys. This, we're about wrapping up. Harvest time. Listen, when, when, we, when we stand before our Creator, He will judge our harvest. He will judge our works. I know that's not popular to say, Jeff. And listen, I don't believe salvation by works. But I believe if you're saved, you're going to have works, whether they're good or bad. And 1 Corinthians 3.13 uh, says, Each one's works will be revealed for the day. It's talking about the day of Jehovah, the day of the Lord. It's not the Lord, it's the Jehovah. The day, the day will declare it and, uh, uh, because it will be revealed by fire. And the fire will test what sort of work each has done. Yeshua talked about our works being judged, our works being tried by fire, and if they're good works, they'll remain. If they're not, they'll be burned up, right? So don't be surprised at your harvest. That's the key message. Don't be surprised with your harvest because you have been the one that's in charge of your garden. Today is the day for planting and maintaining your garden. It's your garden and no one else's. Hallelujah. Guys, I hope that you've really enjoyed this message tonight. Listen, it's, it's something that Yah was dealing with me on, and I wanted to share this with you. We need to understand that our life, my life, I want you to say this with me. Say, my life is my garden. I am responsible for for my garden. It's not your parents' responsibility. It's not your friend's responsibility. It's not your pastor's responsibility. It's not your favorite YouTube preacher or teacher. It is your response. When you stand before Yah, you can't say, well, well you know, Yah, I, I heard uh, 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 brother so-and-so preach on this, and this is what I... Hell, you know, God's going to say, no, 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 no. What did you study out for yourself? You were supposed to study to show yourself approved as a workman rightly dividing the word of God. You were supposed to meditate on my word day and night. What did you do with your garden? Jesus said it like this. What did you do with the talents that I gave you? Oh, God, I knew that you were an unjust God. I knew that you were... You would, you would reap where you didn't sow. So I took this talent and I buried it in the ground. Jesus said, you fool, you should have just at least put it in the bank. It could have drawn interest. Take what he has and give it to the one that has more. And cast this one out with those that have, with weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jeff, that's kind of hard. It's the truth. I think we need to have more people that stand up and say the truth and tell people, listen, I don't want you to stand before Yah and act all ignorant and act like, you know, and, and, and not have an accountability for your life, for the lives of your children that you helped raise up. Teach them the truth of the word of God. Teach them the truth that Yah will be inspecting our works 
What kind of harvest do you want in your life? Are you tired of the harvest that you're getting right now? Listen, if you're tired of rotten fruit, if you're tired of, of things not growing right in your life, look at the seeds that you're planting. Look at what kind of water that's coming in. Is it the, is it the bitter water of the world? Is it the sewage of the world? Are you allowing that to come in? Are you allowing the, the bad seeds or the bad water to come in? Well, no wonder your garden's a mess. Have you, have you gotten down and, 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 and taken out the weeds in your garden? Well, the Bible says that those weeds, those thorns, are going to choke out the life that Yah wants you to have. God wants you to have a blessed life. That doesn't mean that you're going to be rich and not have to work and all that kind of garbage. It's not a prosperity message. God wants you to be blessed. You can be blessed and be dirt poor. Okay? That doesn't have anything to do with wealth. It has to be, it has to do with shalom. It has to be, you know, do with God's peace that passes understanding. God making you whole. Shalom. So guys, I want you tonight to do the three things that we've been talking about for a little bit. Take everything that we've talked about tonight and say la. Pause. Wait just a minute and think on these things. Okay? The next thing I want you to do is Shema. I want you to hear and obey what the Word has to say because we want to get to His Shalom. Amen? We want to get to that wholeness, that healing, that prosperity, that peace, all of these great things that Yah has for us. Amen. So guys, I want you to Silah, Shema, and that leads to Shalom. Think about everything we've talked about tonight, guys. Love to hear a comment in the uh, comments, especially if you're on YouTube. Uh, make sure you hit and like and subscribe uh, to, our, uh, to our channel. And we appreciate every one of you guys. And we love you. We thank you for the comments. We thank you for the feedback. Uh, there's been a couple of feedbacks from this week. And listen, I, I want to tell you that I haven't been able to get to everybody that's been sending me stuff. I'm working on it. I'm working on getting answers back to you about some certain questions that you've had. And I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the prayers. Uh, Miranda just put in the, uh, in the comments here on Facebook. I want to read them for our folks walking, watching by YouTube. Uh, Miranda says, do you spend more time being frustrated with other people who don't agree with you uh, or your politician? Or do you spend more time with Yah growing your compassion for others? Hallelujah. That's a good word. That's a good word. Well, guys, listen, we, we again, we appreciate you uh, being here. We appreciate you watching us. Uh, like and share this on Facebook. Like and share this on YouTube. And again, uh, if, you, if, you're, if you're on YouTube and you haven't followed us on Facebook, follow us there. If you're watching this on YouTube, we ask that you uh, subscribe. And uh, we are eventually, you know, about a month, we're going to be starting to do all of these broadcasts live on YouTube. Uh, so make sure that you're subscribing and following us there. Hit the little bell. Not only hit subscribe, but hit the little bell. That way you'll receive a notification uh, when we go live with a teaching. So we encourage you to do that. Uh, we love you guys, and we will see you later next time. Shalom. Bye-bye.